Today we're talking three things that I absolutely would never go fly fishing without and it's coming up on this episode of Q&A Friday on Fly Fish University TV. Good morning and welcome back to today's episode of Q&A Friday on Fly Fish University. My name is Jordan Ulrich. If you're here, that's a really good thing because if you're here means that you're passionate about fly fishing, maybe you're interested in fly fishing, uh, means that, that I'm doing my job right and my intention here is just to help make fly fishing a little bit better experience for you, hopefully increasing your confidence your competence, that is what we are all about. And today's short episode of Q&A Friday, uh, I'm talking three things that I would never go fly fishing without uh, because I swear by them. They're pretty simple, but also, you know, they're, they're simple, but then I notice when I really notice when I don't have them. Okay, so today's episode comes from Shelly in Vancouver. She said, my husband listens to your podcast religiously, which that's super nice. Thank you. I don't know your husband's name, but thank you to your husband. Uh, and he has just gotten into fly fishing in the past year. His birthday is coming up. What are some odds and ends that I could get him? Okay. Well, first off, huge props to you for buying him fly fishing things because that is super cool. Uh, so I'm just going to give you three little odds and ends that, uh, that, you know, they're again, they're pretty basic, but if I go fishing without them, I really, it puts a bit of a damper on my day. Okay. The first one, this is pretty simple, but you really got to take your, your forceps seriously. The first one is I use these, uh, Dr. Slick. Uh, I have no affiliation whatsoever with Dr. Slick. I use Dr. Slick, I think they're called a barb clamp or a barb crusher, one of the two. I think they're just called a barb clamp, but they're super, super nice. They're pretty cheap. They're about 20 bucks, maybe 25 bucks. But the nice thing about them is that they have a non serrated jaw on them. So what that means is that you can cut, I've crimped everything from like three aught like tarpon hooks, like big saltwater hooks with these. Uh, all the way down to like number 20, you know, emergers, dry flies, uh, chronomids, things like that. So they're really, really nice. Uh, and, and again, you know, they're, they're just a little piece of equipment that I've tested a lot of different forceps. These are the best ones that I've ever come across. Uh, the other nice thing about them is on the inside, they've got a cutter. Uh, that cutter, I've cut everything from, oh, 6x, you know, tippet, like, like three or four pound tippet all the way up to like 80 pound braid or 100 pound monofilament or 100 pound fluoro. So they're really nice. Uh, again, they're pretty inexpensive. I keep them on a lanyard because I've dropped a fair share of them in the water. I've probably spent, yeah, I've spent a few bucks replacing uh, forceps that I've dropped in the water over the years. So yeah, I think they're just called a Dr. Slick barb clamp but this is a pretty old pair. This one's probably about three years old, but I have about six pairs of these and I just, I swear by them. They are the best, they're the best clamps that I've ever come across in my entire life. Uh, number two is a tippet holder. This one is made by Scientific Anglers. And the nice thing about a tippet holder like this is that it keeps all your tippet where it needs to be. I despise rummaging through my bag for anything. I don't like rummaging through my bag for anything. And I don't like rummaging through my stream pack for anything. I don't like rummaging through my backpack for anything. And, and little spools of tippet are definitely something that, that can just kind of get lost in the crevices. So, you know, you're looking for, you want to build yourself a tapered leader. Well, you need like four or five different tippets, right? To look through your kit bag and find individually all those spools. Uh, this is something that I pride myself on is organization of tippet from top to bottom. I've got, uh, I've got thick tippet all the way down. I've got fluorocarbon. I've got two different kinds of monofilament on here. Uh, I think, you know, scientific anglers, you can pick these up at most fly shops. I would imagine they are, and I just clip it right onto my, uh, clip it right onto the inside of my, of my bag or, or on the in or the outside of my bag. Sorry. Uh, either one is fine. But what's really nice about it is it just separates, you know, your mono, your fluoro, 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. Uh, I don't fish a lot thinner than five. So I got six on here actually. But the, it's super nice because it just keeps your tippet 100% organized. I don't like 
losing things and I don't like rummaging through my bag to, uh, I, I don't like rummaging through my bag trying to find things. Now the last thing that I would say is a fishing journal, okay? So you could use uh, just a traditional little journal like this. Uh, these are nice, there's, there's really nothing wrong with these at all. Um, I actually started, so when I moved, the first time that I ever bought a home, actually the last time that I ever bought a home as well, I moved and I lost a handful of journals. I don't know where I put them. I might have, I hate to say this, I might have thrown them out accidentally or somebody might have thrown them out. I don't know, it's in the past. I'm still hoping that I'm gonna find them one day but I'm not overly hopeful at this point. So you can either have a physical journal. Uh, what I've started using is actually a digital journal that I created called the Fly Fishing Journal. Uh, it's nice because it just allows me to track you know, it allows me to track everything from a trip, not just, uh, and I don't have to pull off the top of my head like, oh, what things do I usually write down? It's got air temperature, water temperature, depth, hatch, or, or sorry, air temperature, water temperature, uh, barometer, hatch, uh, big wins, big losses, flies that didn't work, flies that did work, methods that did or didn't work. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I love journaling. Uh, I'll leave a link down below if you want to pick up a copy of this digital journal. I like it because I can't lose it. I store it on my iOS cloud storage, cloud service. Super nice. Uh, a couple other little, you know, odds and ends. Extra pair of socks. Don't get him this for his birthday. It sucks having wet socks. There's a really good bug repellent they call Ultrathon. Uh, I use that because the deep doesn't absorb into your skin. Um, yeah, an extra pair of sunglasses. This is really, really crucial too. There's so many things, you know, that they don't seem to play that big of a, of a role until you don't have them. And then you really notice like, oh my God, I can really do with that at this point. So anyways, uh, I hope that, that you enjoyed. Shelly, if you're listening or, or your husband, oh my God, I hope your husband's like not cluing in that, that, uh, that, that I'm spoiling this for him. But um, just want to say thank you for tuning in and I want to say thank you for watching this episode or listening to this episode wherever you might be and I will leave a link down below or in the video if you're watching on YouTube and you can check out a nice little fishing adventure that we had a few weeks ago some early season still water fly fishing uh, searching for big fish in shallow water super fun with my friend Cameron Paye from Interior Fly Fishing Company. Thank you so much and I will see you on next week's episode.